Yeah, so what I was telling you that uh, the next important uh, rule is to protect the civilians, you know. And during the times of warfare, the military commander, the planner of an operation, the even the civilian leadership of a country, they must always be very clear that we must not uh, uh, create a situation in which civilians will be, you know, slaughtered or killed uh, like that. So, is there any rule in additional protocol one? The answer is yes. And uh, Article 51 of additional protocol one lays down uh, the rule and the first paragraph of Article 51 says that the civilian population and individual civilians shall enjoy general protection against dangers arising from military operations, right? So this is the very first principle. It means that civilians will always enjoy protection from military operations. And second, that the civilian population shall not be the object of attack. This is very clear. Whenever you plan an attack, it must be clear that civilians will not be the object of attack. And then it clears uh, a next situation which says that acts of violence, the primary purpose of which is to spread terror among the civilian population are prohibited. So if any kind of uh, weapon is used by which you will spread terror amongst the civilians, this is also prohibited under international humanitarian law. And then paragraph four of article 51 says that attacks must not be indiscriminate, right? So again, this is an extension of the principle which was laid down in article 35. 51 paragraph four uh, again says that attacks must not be indiscriminate. And it's, it says that the attacks must be only directed at a specific military objective. So whenever you uh, have to plan an attack, you must plan only to achieve your military objective. It should not be to cause destruction to the civilian population, but it should be only uh, directed at a specific military objective. And uh, Paragraph 5 of Article 51 says that the following types of attacks are indiscriminate. So it also gives examples that these are the uh, types of attacks which are indiscriminate. What is the first? It says that an attack by bombardment, bombing, you know, use of bombing. And you might be knowing that now even a separate treaty has been there. There is a, you know, there is a separate treaty on uh, cluster munitions. Cluster munitions is that kind of, you know, uh, ammunition which is uh, using uh, droplets of bombs. Many thousands of bombs are dropped. So, um, Article 51, Paragraph 5. Article 51, Paragraph 5 says that that an attack by bombardment by any methods or means which is which is treating as a single military objective is prohibited and second it says that an attack which may be expected to cause incidental loss of civilian life uh, that is not prohibited so article 51 paragraph 5 is very important it also lays down first on the on the one hand it lays down that an attack of bombardment by which you do not achieve your specific military objective is prohibited and second it says that uh, an attack which causes incidental loss of civilians that is not prohibited so these are uh, very important it means that article 51 paragraph uh, uh, 2 and 4 and 5 Again, three. So, law faculty, three centers, and three paragraphs of Article 51 uh, are again very important. First is Article 51, Paragraph 2. Second is Article 51, Paragraph 4. And the third is 
Article 51, Paragraph 5. So I am not going to tell you so many provisions so as to confuse you, but I am just telling you that again these are the three further, you know, uh, uh, provisions of law which explain the basic rules which were there in Article 35. Right. So uh, these are the uh, six uh, things that uh, are important, basically. Uh, uh, that how you will have to plan your uh, war. Uh, so whenever you are planning a war, you must be very clear that you must not attack the civilians and uh, you should not employ those means of warfare by which you cause unnecessary suffering, superfluous injury, etc. and uh, environmental causing great environmental damage. Sometimes you will wonder also uh, that during the, during the times of warfare, uh, can you we use, a, use a weapon uh, which is directed at, uh, uh, you see, that uh, kind of uh, hospitals, uh, which is directed at uh, 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 kind of nuclear installation, uh, which is uh, um, supplying electricity from the nuclear energy. Uh, sometimes you might wonder that can you uh, direct your weapon to because nowadays weapons can be directed uh, so can you direct your your weapon to uh, a dam which is a huge dam and because dams are also very uh, useful for a country and uh, for the economy so uh, because there have been so many instances uh, uh, in pa in the past that countries have, you know, directed their weapons uh, against these kind of, you know, so these are all, you know, these are civilian objects. Earlier, what I told you that civilians as such. And now what I'm telling you that uh, what I was telling you next is, uh, so three things I'm going to tell you today. First was that the basic principles of uh, uh, the means and methods of warfare. And uh, the second thing I told you that Second principle was that to distinguish between combatants and civilians, that kind of uh, weapon must be used. And the third in third is again explaining the second principle, right? That how will you distinguish uh, the civilians from the other other targets? I told you that civilians and civilian objects. The second is civilian objects, right? Now the next rule of warfare is that you should also not target civilian objects, okay? Yeah. Uh, so civilian objects you should also not target and therefore what I was telling you that Article 52 paragraph 2 uh, is very important in this context. And what Article 52, yeah, 52 paragraph 2 says that attacks shall be limited strictly to military objectives now it's very important you know it means that the whenever you plan an attack you must know that what is your military objective right and uh, that was the that, that will be the foundation of your whole planning so article 52 paragraph 2 says that attacks must be limited to military objectives. And what, what is the definition of military objective? That is also given. It's very interesting in Article 52, Paragraph 2, uh, that how, what is the definition of military objective? That is also there. What is the meaning? How will you know that what is your military objective? You see, it is defined and therefore law is very useful. It says that those objects which by their nature, location, purpose or use, four things, by their nature, by their location, by their purpose or by their use make 
an effective contribution to military action and whose total or partial destruction or capture or neutralization will offer a definite military advantage. This is the meaning of military objective. It means that unless and until the whole objective of attack is not clear in the minds of the planner of any, any operation, whether the planner is a civilian uh, leader or a military commander, <coughs> uh, there must be clarity in the mind that if a situation arises where you have to think that what is a military objective, you must know that by the location of uh, an object, if you destroy that location, it will definitely give you a military advantage, right? not political advantage, not economic advantage, but it's a military advantage. It's a strategic advantage that you will definitely gain. So this is a very important, this, again, this is a, a, uh, this is a principle, basic principle of means of warfare, that whenever you do it, you must keep in mind that attacks will only be limited to military objectives. And thereafter, if you look at uh, some other provisions, I will just uh, take uh, five more minutes and then I will wrap up for today. And, uh, then we will decide again that when to meet next. Uh, I will just tell you that uh, there are uh, uh, two, three uh, articles which are again uh, more important. I am saying that you must not target cultural object and you must not target places of worship. You see, places of worship, temples, mosques and uh, you know other places of worships they should not be targeted because what people are doing there with people civilians are normally going there and civilians are not going there with weapons and therefore those places must not be the objects of attack protection of cultural objects article 53 it says that uh, uh, a monument, which is a historic monument. For example, uh, uh, sometimes even in my mind, uh, sometimes I am agitated and then sometimes suppose if I will say that, okay, now Red Fort is a, sim uh, Red Fort is a symbol of uh, 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 Mughal uh, suzerainty over India and it, it was Islamic suzerainty over India and therefore sometimes it uh, comes to my mind that, okay, in some uh, fit of anger and if I go there and uh, you know, some kind of uh, use of bomb and then I will destroy it. You see, these kind of things are prohibited in law because this this has become a historic monument. You know, Lal Kila is not just a symbol of, you know, this kind of thing, but it's a symbol of, you know, uh, many other things like architecture. Wood architecture was used. And therefore, now it has become a historic monument. And there will be no military advantage uh, which will be there if you just destroy uh, the, these guys, like somebody will destroy so tomorrow, somebody will target, suppose Taj Mahal. So will, will that be okay? As a military commander, will that be okay? No, the answer is no, because this is a cultural object. This is not an object which is a military object, right? So Article 53, therefore, is uh, very important. And then, uh, I will also take you to Article 56, lastly. So this is the last uh, provision for today. Article 56, which says, protection of works and installations containing dangerous forces, right? So what does it say? It says that uh, uh, those installations which contain dangerous forces like dams and like nuclear electrical generating stations uh, like uh, uh, such kind of you know installation which is called dikes dykes dikes so these kind of uh, uh, things 
uh, must not be the object of attack. So Article 51, which has, which is a long paragraph, although, but at least the first paragraph uh, must be known to you. Article 56 says that works or installations containing dangerous forces, namely dams, dikes, and nuclear electrical generating stations, shall not be the object of attack. So uh, these are the very basic uh, laws which are um, contained in Article uh, 35, uh, 51, 53, uh, and then 56, uh, so and 52. So what uh, today we learned about these provisions, uh, perhaps that will give you a, uh, give you an idea that uh, how uh, we should uh, go on to use any kind of weapons. One, whether they are not bound by uh, that basic provision that no indiscriminate attack is prohibited, you should not uh, use any weapon which will not uh, distinguish between civilians and combatants. The answer is that they are committing a wrong and uh, they can be prosecuted. If not today, they, maybe tomorrow. And uh, the basis will be this, this whole international humanitarian law. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so with this, uh, I am going to conclude today's uh, uh, lecture series. And uh, uh, if you will tell me, uh, then I am added to your group. And if you will tell me, then I will uh, take uh, another, another lecture, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Uh, so whenever yes, you... Sir, please take some more glasses for us. All right. Yeah, so thank you for saying that. And uh, we will thank be... Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, we will be meeting there. Uh, we will be meeting again. Uh, no problem. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, sure, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Take care.